Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking about how would a guaranteed basic income work? How would it work if it were instituted uh, here in Nashville? How would it work if it were instituted nationally? We have three people with us, all from the Nashville Economic Justice Alliance, Kenneth Kane, Lois Freeman, Robert Guff, and uh, they're taking your calls. And, and we have on the line here, we have Leonardo, who has waited patiently. Leonardo, thank you. Hey, hello. Thank right. you for being so patient. Well, yeah, you are the, all right, what, what's on your mind? Okay, so I'm on mine is Nashville, of course, and this basic income question. The only epitome that I hold up in front of it is political and the word we. Um, well, over we, I'm going to use the word up because I have to protect my significance. But, you know, units for vessels and putting a vest on a buyer, you know, I don't think that Nashville offers up enough of what is, I would say, units or what is called like ROT, W-R, A-U-G-H-T. This, this is a city that is over and over again on the up. But I don't think, and like I said, I took notes to protect myself, I don't think that we are past radical time. Uh, the over will always be like myself. I am upon a certain economic person. But if we still say politics are the we, then what is the up in Nashville? If what, is, what, income, what is the upside saying, okay, of this? This is the up, yeah. This what, is the what is upness the, of it. And then you look at the law, and he says national, he says here. So we think about service. That's all I get. Right. Okay. The, yeah, most well, definitely well, the service that is happening here is the basic need of Nashville. So if you give it basic income, what is our rock upscale? I guess that's the word I would use. I'm protecting myself too. I that's okay. Know. That's all right. What is the upside? All right. I think I think we've been we've been talking about that. What what is what is the upside? Uh, affordable housing is a big problem here. Um, just okay go go over I'll, I'll i'll just throw that out robert uh walk us through again the upside here so i want to go back to a word that uh that, our, that leonardo used in that service uh, i think basic one of the really underappreciated and i talked about uh, benefits of a basic income is it frees up uh more people for service uh, and we talked about earlier, are there any examples of basic income when people uh, uh, stop working or would it, well, there are a lot of us who actually do live on a basic income. At this very moment through this pandemic, I've been on the basic income of my wife's support. My wife is a physician. And it's freed me up personally to uh, do a lot more work in causes I care about. And uh, I don't personally feel like it has caused me to work any less. Honestly, I feel like I'm, work I'm working more. And there are a lot of Americans and Nashvilleans who can relate to that, who uh, go to work uh, during the work week, but then come home to a family, a community, uh, 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 a church group, uh, or you know, another uh, larger extended uh, community or family group that they give a lot of service to. And we don't really have a good way in America right now to compensate people for this really valuable work. We don't even have a good way to ac accommodate the fact that parents themselves contribute a lot to their households uh, through their, their work as parents. It, it's wonderful work. It's important work. It doesn't really pay. And a basic income frees up families and individuals and communities to find that division of labor within themselves that really works best. And so one big advantage you see is that sort of flexible mobility. And it's like what uh, Kenneth and Lois talked about with the outcomes in places where we studied this before. It's hard to predict, you know, if I give cash to this family, what is this family going to do with it? On the front end, I don't really know, but on the back end, when we look at it, families find all sorts of great and creative ways to elevate themselves in the community. In one family, it might enable someone to go to school to get the career they always wanted. In another family, it might give them the ability to uh, start a job where they can be their own boss with the skills they've earned over many years. It's very hard to spell it out. And actually, a really good place people can go is uh, there's an organization called Give Directly, and it is a uh, nonprofit that has mm -hmm. been uh, giving cash directly to uh, combat poverty and as disaster relief funds for a while and they they study this heavily and they say it best they, they you know they've they've you know 
we've combed through hundreds and hundreds of articles studying the impact of cash, and it's extremely hard to put your finger on what the benefits are because they are just so diffuse. If we do a housing program in Nashville, we're, we're putting all our, our attention into just this one component of uh, the economic conditions of our of our city, and we can maybe nudge the needle on housing, but we can't. You know, it, it feels like you're putting your finger in the dam, and there's more holes that are going to burst open. We're not sure where it's going to be, but cash, it's fungible. It can go where it needs to go, and, and that's why I, to, I question. Uh, okay, if we that means money maybe doesn't need to go to affordable housing. There there is some money that you take away from yeah. big government programs, I guess, and put it just toward people. Do you feel like there is that opportunity? That might make some people feel more comfortable with this idea. It, it, and I know you want some safety nets to, to remain in place, but maybe instead of, of, of putting money through some, some big organization, you're giving it directly to people. Is that, is that what you're saying? Hey, Lois, what, what about that? We actually, that is not what we're saying, but that is an option. That is part of some conversation. That actually, I believe, is what Andrew Yang was proposing initially even though he shifted in his position. Uh, along the way, we may want to propose that. The key of what we're finding now is, and the reason I wouldn't want to do it initially, it, it sounds like what you're saying, if people are getting some other support, let's say, you know, I don't know, some disability, it sounds like that's what you're So that's not what we're saying. Um, because people need the, the, the support. What we find though is, is that for the pilots that have existed, that is that is happening people in other words when you make a certain if you get other kinds of uh what is it support if you get additional cash then you get less in your support you see what i'm saying so right. in other words for the pilots if people got 500 dollars, if they're getting some other kind of support they are actually losing some of their additional support we really don't even want that and people are trying to adjust that here's the bottom line we don't we want to help people build this floor and not have people to have their have their money minimized i do know the chicago pilot that i'm hearing about is talking about it from another way for example instead of putting money into uh prisons they're saying take that money and use it for a guaranteed basic income <laughs> now that part i like okay <laughs> All right, all right, we'll I, take a break, and Kenneth, will come back and, and talk to you. We have to take a break. Uh, take a break. Be back right after this.